Since the early 19th century, and probably even earlier, mankind has created strange inventions to view normal 2D images as if they were 3D. These inventions allowed us to view images, movies, and eventually video games in 3D, instead of looking up into the real world. Now, may I introduce the latest development in 3D vision. The... Hell is that? Hello everybody and welcome to Corona Plays in the Real World. Today I have a big pile of cardboard. Yes, that's right. I am playing with the Google Cardboard. Now what is the Google Cardboard? Well, basically it's Google's answer to the Oculus Rift. They probably looked at it, went, you know what? We can do that too, just with stuff that people probably already have in their own homes, as well as a few bits and bobs you can buy for a few bucks online. And this is what we get. We get cardboard. Now, I admit Google Cardboard was announced back in, I think, August during Google I.O. of this year. And this video might not seem relevant anymore, but it is, since Google has recently been in the news again for having had its Google Cardboard sold 50,000 times. Now, that might not seem like a lot, but keep in mind that Google itself does not sell Google Cardboard. They don't. They provide instructions. They provide the blueprints to build the cardboard itself and a list of parts that are needed for it. Uh, we have, obviously, the lenses. Very specific type of lens, which I will include information to get that information in the description. We need a round magnet a washer of about the same size. Of course, it has to be a ferrous washer so it interacts with the magnet, of course. We need a gum band, an NFC sticker, which isn't as needed as it would seem. You can activate Google Cardboard just through the regular interface, so you don't actually need the NFC chip. It's just easier. And then you need a few bits of Velcro to hold parts of it together. And then from there, all you have to do is cut out the cardboard, which took me about an hour and 45 minutes to about two hours, but I wasn't using an X-Acto knife. I could have probably done it considerably faster if I had been using the proper tools, but all I had at the time was my pocket knife. That's my own stupid mistake, and that's my own risk of life and limb. I don't recommend you do it, and if you do do it, I recommend adult supervision. I do not qualify. So after that, you just got to put it together. Well, obviously the NFC chip goes into this chunk of the cardboard. Two pieces of Velcro go right on the edge here. Two other pieces of Velcro go on this little chunk right here with the curvy bit without the nose cut out, obviously. In the eye section, the first thing you've got to do is figure out which end is front, and that is the one with the slot once it's folded together like this. And you got to make sure that the bulged part of the optics is actually pointing towards your eye and then they just go into this section right here. So if, it's, if this is the front, then this is the back, then the optics need to be put in with the bulge facing up. 
and they just slide into the hole, assuming they were cut out properly. Mine obviously weren't. All right, just let me fight with it for a second. Ugh, there we go. Okay, one. Ugh, two. All right, and as a note, always remember to clean your optics. So once it folds together, there you go. You got your lens piece. Very nice. Then, back onto the main housing frame. We see this end with the little hole right here. Well, that hole, if I can ever get it detached properly, is for your round magnet. Now, my round magnet doesn't fit all that well into the hole because, you know, I suck at cutting things out. But that's it. That's all it really does. And then it folds over, and then the washer actually connects right there. I have the magnet in backwards because I want the concave part of the washer facing the other way. So I just have to flip the magnet over. Ah, uh, the joys of uh, north and south poles. Boop. And that's it. That's all it does. It just sits there like this. And then once everything gets put together, which <laughs> is a little bit confusing, I will admit, what you got to do is you got to take your optics piece, slide it into those two holes right there, so it looks like this. The uh, divider piece, that's this guy right here, sits uh, right there, between where the eyes, eyes are. That way that this eye cannot see this eye's image, image and vice versa. So once you get that together, you just fold around the frame. And then this piece is supposed to have double-sided sticky tape on it so that when you fold it up, it just sticks in place. I don't have double-sided sticky tape. I do, however, have regular scotch tape. So... I'm going to improvise. Not very well, obviously. There, and then that holds it all together. And that's it, that's, that's really the entire thing. Oh, but I forgot the gum band. Now you might be curious what the gum band's for. Well, the gum band's actually to go around this little outcropping like that. And the reason that that's there is not to hold anything together. It's actually to provide a friction surface for the phone so it doesn't slide one way or the other while you're using the device. Pretty creative design, actually, in my opinion. Quite nice. Uh, and that's it. All you do from here is you put your phone here, you flip this over, and that's it. You're done. Now the NFC chip is supposed to activate the Google Cardboard software, and it does. And that's it, you're done. Poof, done. Now the next step you gotta do is you gotta install the Google Cardboard software. The Google Cardboard software can be found on the Google Play Store. As you can see, I already have the Google Cardboard software installed. All I have to do is click on it, and it activates itself. Woo! Now, I would be using this thing in the cardboard except for one important little fact. My phone is far too large for the cardboard. <laughs> the Google Cardboard was designed for the Nexus 4 and phones of the same size. It does not work with anything larger or technically anything smaller because of, well, math. Because the screen is larger on both the X and Y axes, the images are actually too far apart for the cardboard to properly view. They don't align in your eyes and you don't get the 3D, you just get this m mash of image. And it just doesn't work all that well. Now there are cardboard kits that you can buy from Amazon that are specifically designed for the Note 3, which is the exact same size as far as I can tell as the Note 4, so it should work. 
However, it is just a scaled up version of this. Now, obviously, if you scale it up, that means the optics separate. And this pulls back and it's, well, it doesn't work all that well. It works, but it doesn't work like it should. I'm sorry, you have to completely redesign it to actually make it work. And it's kind of a shame I was going to pick one up, but as I was reading the reviews, I saw that it wasn't what I hoped it would be. It's what I feared it would be. So, however, for this video, that doesn't matter because the next thing I will be showing you is just going to be the screen itself. So here we are with the Google Cardboard interface. And as we can see, it's relatively simple, but relatively simple is a good thing considering what we're trying to do. Well, what they're trying to do, I should say, technically. And that is to control the entire phone by just what's on the piece of cardboard, technically. So how you look around is you just turn your head left and right to look through the menu. You can use the washer to select things, or you can just tap on the screen. I believe tapping on the side of the cardboard itself works, but it doesn't work right now for me since I'm holding the phone in my hand and not in the cardboard itself. And even then, it doesn't work all that well. It really doesn't. Um, and you know what? That's basically it. It's relatively simplistic, and that's probably a good thing. Uh, so what do we got? We got a tutorial that shows you how to use it. We have the tour guide, which actually takes you on a tour of very specific places, which is also kind of cool. It shows what can be done with VR in interesting ways outside of just, you know, video games. Uh, we got an exhibit, which is an interesting thing because instead of you looking around, as you turn your head, the exhibit itself rotates in front of you. Uh, kind of nauseating. We have Windy Day, which is just a little cartoon that somebody added to there, which it's cute. We have Google Earth, which I think is the best, best thing out of all of this. You can fly around the planet. Uh, you got YouTube, which it provides a few... 3D videos for it, and it's all pretty cool. Then we have Photosphere, which is like Google Street View, just, you know, a few select pictures. Uh, now, you might be noticing that I'm having a few problems selecting things, and that's not just because I'm holding it on with, or holding the phone with my hand. Here, let me go the entire way over, and I'll put the phone down on the desk. So now I am not moving the phone at all. And we can see that it has a slight drift problem. Now, it's been this way for a while, even though I got the recent Google Cardboard update, the big Google Cardboard update. And I don't know why it does it. I would say that it might be my accelerometer giving problems, but there are other reasons why I don't think that's the case, mostly because the accelerometer works perfectly fine on other things. And the whole Nexus 4 did the same exact thing. Hmm. But let's play around with it a little bit and try to ignore the drift problem. So let's select our Google Earth. And it is pretty much exactly what you would expect. It is you looking around the Google Earth maps with the, obviously the map is in its 3D mode. And if you use, whoops, Hang on, go away. Yeah, uh, I, like I said, I'm holding the phone with my hand, so I'm kind of, it's a little awkward. It, it works far, far better in the cardboard, I'll point that out. But if you, you know, swipe the washer or if you tap on the screen, you can fly around. You can look down, you'll fly down, look up, you'll fly up. And you can look around and you'll fly in the direction that you're pointing. And it is really cool. Can I fly into the mountain? I actually have never tried this before. I can... Oh, kind of. I slide up the mountain. All right. <laughs> Interesting. But yeah, so you can fly around Google Maps, which is really cool. Uh, you look up and tap. Boop. It'll fly to space, which then you can look down at the planet itself. And you can pick some predetermined spots. Zermatt. Chicago, Bryce Canyon, Marseille? I think that's in France. 
I actually do think that's in France. Um, I may be horribly mistaken. Let's find out. Okay, I have no idea. I was hoping something blatantly French, like the Empire State Building, but uh, I don't know. That's that's my fault, though. I My failed geography. I have no idea. It's some castle. Let's go fly over there. Boop. Nope, don't know the castle. <laughs> that's okay, though. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's actually pretty cool. Uh, I really do like the idea that you can fly around cities. And you can fly around places that you've never been before. And you can learn in case you are like me and you fail geography. You don't know where the f anything is. You can expand your horizons, as it were. So, yeah, I find this pretty awesome. I quite enjoy this. Um, it's a little weird, but, of course, that's because we're using Google Earth. And Google Earth is just made out of satellite pictures nothing 3d nothing really fancy it's just kind of improvised 3d really kind of it works though it works well enough it works well enough to be cool uh and then we're just to go back to the menu you just tilt your head the entire way and you go back to your main menu now i'm not going to over go over all of the things that are on here well you should really do that yourself because this is actually pretty cool it doesn't cost that much to get into it if you already have a phone for it now there's a list of phones that are compatible with google cardboard obviously the note 4 is not compatible even though it has the software and the hardware to do it it's not the right size for the google cardboard and it's kind of a shame but you know that's what i get for buying a giant freaking phone uh, but if you have like a Nexus 4 or one of the other ones that are on the list, I highly recommend you get into it. It doesn't cost that much to start. You just need a bit of cardboard and probably about 10 bucks to buy the parts. Uh, you could buy an entire set with the cardboard already laser cut it out and all that fun stuff. And it looks all pretty and stuff for 20, 25 bucks online. Might be able to even find it cheaper somewhere. I don't know. So I I do highly recommend looking into it. This is showing, this shows uh, what can be done with VR that I really haven't seen done with VR yet, like the exhibit thing. That's a very strange thing. I'll click on that real quick just to show it because it just strikes me as very, very odd how they did this. So we got the, the exhibit here, but the exhibit itself doesn't move. As I turn my head, the exhibit itself turns. So I can look at the exhibit in all different directions and it's a really interesting concept to be able to look at a 3d object i guess for like modeling and stuff but it's a little nauseating i should say mostly because it's not moving it's just rotating and that screws with the whole eye inner ear coordination thing it makes people nauseous makes people sick uh, that's actually kind of where motion sickness comes from so it's an interesting concept i just don't play with it all that often all right, so I will end the video here, and I will say to you guys, as always, keep playing the game and have fun in stereo, or stereoscopic as the proper term would be.